So let me just do this last example. Again, we're just going to follow the steps. The first thing you do, Josh, is you group the first two terms. Once you've grouped the first two terms, its next thing is factor so a is equal to 1. So my a is not equal to 1 in this case. My a is equal to negative 3. So I have to factor out a negative 3. When I factor out a negative 3, I'm left with x squared plus 4x plus 1. Does everybody follow me with my factoring skills? OK. Now I can do b divided by 2 and square it. So I do 4 divided by 2 squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Not done yet. Ah, oh, yeah, you could do it after minus. OK. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 1, or plus 4. Does everybody see where I got the 4, right? b divided by 2 squared plus 4. You add it inside, you subtract it outside. However, I just need you guys to understand and follow me here that this 4 since you added this 4 inside the parentheses, inside the parentheses, this 4 is being multiplied by a negative 3. So if you added a 4, that positive 4 you added is being multiplied by a negative 3. So if you subtract a negative 4 on the outside, you also have to multiply it by a negative 3. That's where everybody forgets. Just remember, when, you're at, when you factor something out, that number is really being multiplied by a negative 3. So you have to remember it on the outside. Now, I know this can be factored. Again, this is just remembering factoring. Students always get stuck with this. This is just your factoring. So this becomes negative 3x plus 2 squared. That becomes positive 12 plus 13. So now, let's go ahead and our, first of all, does anybody have any questions? AJ, questions? You good? Okay. Yeah. Where did that 4 come from? Um, right. This 4? Obtain your perfect square trinomial, b divided by 2 squared. My b is 4. Don't use that b. That's from the one before it was factored. That's my b. So now my vertex is going to be negative 2, comma 13. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 2. My domain um, is going to be all real numbers. Now my range, yes? Why do I add and subtract here? Because as I mentioned, if you have an equation, as long as you add and subtract the same number, you still have an equivalent equation. Which, are you daydreaming when I just went over this? I just went over this exact same thing. You can either add and subtract to the same side produces equivalent equations, or if you add or subtract to doing the same thing on both sides produces equivalent equations. Doesn't matter which one you do. When we are solving using completing the square, we like to put it on the other side because we're trying to solve, isolate the variable. But we're writing it in vertex form. We're just gonna, we want to keep everything on the same side. That's why we add and subtract. Okay. Um, so my range, here's the important thing I don't want anybody to miss out on. Ladies and gentlemen, the range, you guys notice this is negative. So the farthest this graph is going down, it's going infinitely down, right? So the lowest value for my range is negative infinity because it's facing down. And the graph is going all the way up to its highest vert point on the vertex, which would be this maximum, which is 13. All right, 
done a lot of teaching.